Hey everybody, it's Mario Hernandez from Media Current, and this is part two of the video that I started last time when I built a slider using the Slick Slider Library. This time, I'm going to show you how you can integrate the slider that we built last time with Drupal. In an effort to take advantage of component-based development, I've done some modifications to the original slider that we built last time, and Nothing significantly has changed. The only thing is that I'm making use of previously built components. So rather than hard coding the markup as we did last time, we are reusing components. One of the things that I did is um, before I build the slider all into one tweak template. And sometimes it's okay to take a step back and think about if you're going to be working with Drupal or, or any other content management system is think about how is that going to be built in Drupal, right? In this case, uh, what are the kind of the steps that we are going to take for building something like this in Drupal? And if we think about the slider, right, we have this slider here. And we mentioned last time that each slide in the slider represents, in our case, it will represent a news article, or it could be a blog post, or it could be an event, right? So technically, in Drupal terms, each slide represents a node right that we are viewing on a specific view mode right so as an example here i could have a news content type and i'm i have created a slider view mode where i've defined the fields that i want to display on my slider right uh, fields like the image the title and the body text right so these are coming directly from a content type called news and so each slide is a, a node, an article. In order to combine them, right, combine multiple articles together and turn them into a slider, so how do we build a collection of nodes in Drupal? There are several ways in which we can do that. A view is one way uh, and other methods. What I've done is I created a paragraph type that I added to, let's say, my homepage content type. And the paragraph type has a field, which is a content reference field. This example here is, is, is a little bit more complex than uh, what I built here, but it, it shows the same concept. Think of this as my paragraph type called slider, right? And so in the slider, I have one field I call slider. You can call it slider items or anything. And it uses an entity reference field. This entity reference points to the news content type. So basically, I'm setting up this content reference to pull articles from the news content type, and I am setting it to accept multiple values, unlimited values, so I can pull as many articles as I want. If I go to my page and add content, I'm going to add a hero component to my page. And then in the hero component is where I have that slider feel here. And here I can pull as many articles as I want. And so, so that's kind of the way the infrastructure of this has been built. So I show that because it's like important to understand how these things are built in Drupal so that when you build your components, you can have kind of like a one-to-one a -one equivalent between your components and the way things are built in Drupal. So one of the things that I did, uh, changes that I made to the component is rather than building everything into one single tweak template, is I first build a slider slide, like a single item slide. Uh, the JSON for this or the demo content is basically just a single item. This is an object with an image, a title, and a body um, feel, right? The title is a little more complex and I can show you what, what I'm doing with all this here, but this is just basically a title feel. And the twig is making use of another component that I already have, right? Uh, I didn't have to do this, but since I already have a, what is called a card component that already makes each node looks like an article, the way you see on the slide, then I'm just saying uh, for a single slide, display it as a card. And a card is basically what you see here. This thing is a card. So since I already have this component built and I'm just making use of it. And so a single slide is equivalent to a card. Think of the single slide as, or the card, as the single node that we just saw. 
And then in the slider, which will be the collection of nodes or news articles, well, what I did is I created an items array and I have multiple items. They're all the same as far as the fields that they have. Image, title, and body, right? All three are the same. And notice what I'm doing here is important to, since I'm doing this in Drupal, I'm already in the component checking whether there are attributes that Drupal may want to add to the component because ultimately Drupal will end up using this markup to render the slider, right? So we want to put placeholders for attributes um, and title prefix and title suffix, which are coming in our case are coming from the card. Here's the card that I told you I was already using. Notice how I have title prefix, title suffix, right? But I'm doing this so that when I integrate this with Drupal, Drupal will know where to inject those attributes. Uh, and then I, I'm creating a simple wrapper for my slider. This is the wrapper that will wrap all the slides together. And then I'm looping through the items array here, right? And I'm saying for each item, uh, basically print a slider slide, a single item, right? Now you may wonder what is this block slider mean? This is going to come in handy when we integrate this with Drupal. I'll explain in just a moment what that is. But this is basically uh, a placeholder so that when we integrate this with Drupal, we can actually change whatever is in here um, if we need to, which we will. Right. So this is the, the new kind of refactored slider, you know, just making use of previously built components. Let me show you the heading component, which uh, I referenced a couple of times. The heading component is I created an object and nested several properties within it. One of those being heading level, modifier, text, and URL. What this allows me to do is that I can uh, use a heading component on any page or component or block, and I can change any of these elements, like do I want an H1 or H2 or H3? Do I want to pass a class to my title? Do I, what text will it be, right? The text will be changed different. Is my title a link or just plain text, right? This is what will allow us to do that. So this is just a com typical component that I build on my projects so that I can print titles for anything and be, still be able to change how that title is displayed from a markup point of view. Uh, I believe I have a video on that if you want to look it into it. So, so that's the slider uh, changes that I made. Okay, now let's... Uh, take a look at how we are going to integrate this with Drupal. In Drupal, thinking again in the way Drupal has built this. So before we can print any slide in the way of a card in Drupal, okay, if you want to print a news article that looks like the card that we build, that means we need to uh, work with the node and news is the content type. And then a slider is the view mode that I've created in Drupal. And so I created a view mode called slider and in here, what I'm doing is a couple of things. This is, I'm setting up a variable so that Drupal is aware of the full content array for this node, right? We don't want to throw anything away that Drupal uh, uses or creates. I also set up a variable for the title of the node. Uh, this is not necessary to do here. You can actually do it inside the include, but for the, to make things cleaner down here, uh, I created the variable so that it has the same format as the title of the slide that we have, the heading component that I just showed you. And then as you can see, I'm passing those values. What heading level should each title have? Uh, what class should it be? Uh, the label, this label is basically, if, you, if we scroll up in our template, we will see the, um, there is a label variable right here is basically the title of the node. So I'm saying that for the text property of the heading or the title, I'm passing the label, the value of the label. And for the URL, I'm passing the URL value, which is also another variable that is av are available to us on this node. This is where attributes, title prefix, and title suffix come in handy. Uh, we're passing those and we're mapping them. This is what's coming from the components, right? In this case, the card component. And this side here is what's available in this Drupal template. So all these three variables are available up there if we scroll up. 
And then we map each of the fields of the component of the slider itself. We're mapping the image field from the component on the card to content field image. That's the name of the field in our news content type. The heading or title of the news article is the heading is being mapped to this new variable here that we just built right here. And finally, the body, we're mapping it to Drupal's um, body field from that content type. Uh, this here is just an extra measure to ensure that the content is not completely empty before we print it, right? That's all there is. So, so what we've done here is we have integrated a single card or you can think of a single slide with Drupal so that every time we print a news article and we use the slider view mode, our article will look like a card. Okay. Now let's go and work on the wrapper of the full slider, right? That will be the paragraph because we build a paragraph type to collect a series of articles that we want to display as a slider. So here I have a paragraph with the uh, template called slider because this is the name that I assigned to my paragraph type. It's called slider. And what I'm doing here, I'm doing something different. I'm notice, notice that I'm doing an embed rather than an include. And I'll explain to you why that is in just a moment. I'm passing the attributes again from the full slider component. And the items array that is on my slider component, right? This here, this items array. Once we render this in Drupal, it will actually be the field for the paragraph type. This is basically the paragraph type field. If you think about it, the paragraph type field that we added to collect all the, um, the, the, the articles, the news articles, that field acts as a collection of articles, right? Because you can bring in as many articles as you want from Drupal, the way I show you. And so in reality, that field produces an array of articles. And so the so what I'm saying here is that the items array in my component is a is equivalent to the paragraph type field, which will have an array of articles. And here's where the block comes in handy. Since we are changing um, how we are wrapping each article in a card here in Drupal, right? We already did the integration of the card and the single item here on its own. So um, every time we print an article in a slider view mode, it'll look like a card. So the card is already been integrated. So here, rather than having to having to integrate the articles all, all over again, what we're saying is map the items array to the paragraph field, which will give us an array of items, right? From the items that we select from Drupal. And then print that inside this slider block, right? So we're saying, since we already integrated a card with each individual item, here, just print all those items. And by default, they will show up as cards, right? And uh, because we have a Drupal library, and this library includes all the CSS that we wrote for the slider, as well as the JavaScript that we wrote for our slider. And in addition to that, it has a dependency of the slick library. This is the library that we wrote when we integrated the slick library in the previous video with our project, right? So by creating a library here, now I can make it as a dependency. So every time I use this slider library on any component or any page, the slick library will come with it. And so if you notice here on the slider itself, we attach that slider library. And by attaching this library, we are bringing the slick library with it. And so our slider code, custom code that we wrote is this here, right? And so this code is what is going to initialize the slider. And because we're attaching that library to the component, by including the component here, then its library comes with it as well. Uh, that's the reason for using embed, by the way, uh, so that we can make use of this 
Twig block, and I have a video on Twig blocks if you'd like to take a look at that. And uh, the embed is, uh, as well as um, extends, is the only statements that allow you to work with block, Twig blocks. The include will not do that. Now, this is how it looks now in Drupal. This is a slightly different site, but it's the same project, just different instance. But here it is. That is the, um, the way that slider actually was integrated into this project by breaking it down into single items first, then a collection of items, and then mapping fields from the component to Drupal fields. So I uh, hope this was helpful. Stay tuned for next videos. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.